Let's move on to us parents in verse 4. Let me read that. Paul says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Don't provoke your children to anger. What Paul is saying in this verse to us is basically, don't make your children angry. That's the idea, that's the root word that's behind this. Don't make them angry. Don't provoke them to anger. This command puts a lot of responsibility on us dads and moms to really intimately understand each of our kids. And by the way, I'm sure you already know this, but every one of our kids is different. Okay, they're not cookie cutters. In fact, when Michelle and I had our first daughter, we couldn't understand why all these parents around us were having these issues because Sarah was the model child. I really wish we had had Sarah second, although if we had had her for a second, we might not have had a second one. <laughs> because our second one was at the opposite end of the spectrum from where Sarah was, okay? She was, by her own admission, she was stubborn. She was independent. Now, do we love her any less? Not at all. But we understood how other parents struggled after we had our second one. We need to understand our kids. And when we understand them, we can raise them in ways that don't unnecessarily frustrate them, that don't unnecessarily cause them to get angry. We need to have that balance where we can really discipline them and have good structure in the family. But at the same time, integrate a lot of mercy and grace. Realize also that there could be good, righteous things that absolutely God is leading you to do that make your kids upset with you. Okay, this is a, that's outside. Those kind of things are outside of what Paul is saying. It doesn't apply there. But as we raise our children, let's don't provoke them. In Colossians, Again, this is a parallel passage in Colossians chapter 3. I think we can get a little bit better picture of, of what Paul is saying. He says, don't stir them up. Colossians 3.21. Don't stir them up. Don't provoke. Don't irritate them. Those kinds of things. And I have to confess, there were some times as we raised our kids that I did that, and that's wrong. Why does Paul say not to do those things? Well, he gives the, the answer, the reason, in chapter 3, verse 21 of Colossians. He says, so that they don't lose heart. So that they're not discouraged, so that they don't lose their passion in life. That's what Paul is saying. Now, in preparation for this, this message here, and sorry, Rachel, I won't step on your toes too much. I promise. I ask each of my girls to send me an email or talk to me on the phone or whatever about things that Michelle and I did right as we raised them, things that at the time they thought were wrong, but now realize that really it was a good thing. Things that, they're, that they thought at that time were wrong and still think are wrong. Okay? I asked them things like, what's the best thing that we did and what's the worst thing that we did? Okay? In this whole area of not provoking, not stirring your kids up, not exciting them in that wrong way about things, 
we transgressed, and I was probably more at fault than Michelle was. Let me read what daughter Miriam said, and she said it's fine to share it with you. She said, I didn't write anything that I wouldn't tell a stranger, so it's fine for you to, to read and say what I said. So, under the heading, what are some of the things that we did wrong? She says, the extreme church going. All my friends had the choice of having to go to growth group or youth group. I didn't, so I resented it. They considered it fun while I considered it a form of punishment. I wanted to work, work at her job, and that just made it harder to get hours when I couldn't work on Wednesdays and Sundays. Then she goes on, and this is true. Some of the Awana leaders had it out for me. Now, they didn't really honestly have it out for her. They were trying to spur her on and to help her get her act together with the Lord. But she viewed it, and I can see why she'd view it this way, as they had it out for me. She says, we both know it, and listen to this, and yet you still made me deal with them. You should have moved me to another wanna, a wanna club or something. Okay? In this area, we stirred her up in a negative way. We provoked her. We hurt her. And, and we, we affected her some. This is one of the areas that I would go back. If I could go back, which you can't do, right? If I could go back, that's one of the things I would have changed. Probably would have been a little more lenient. We would have looked for possibly other programs she could have gotten involved in or something. Okay? But as you raise your children, watch for these things that, that maybe God impresses on your heart. Hey, this is not good. You need to, to, to flex here a bit. I think that we as parents oftentimes need to probably give more mercy and grace than we do. Not always. That's not always true. Again, it's that balance between, okay, here's the standard. Here's what God wants us to do. But when you don't match up, where's the mercy and the grace? Now, in verse 4, getting back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, Paul begins by stating the command negatively. Don't make them angry. Don't stir them up. Right? But then, he ends with the positive, which I think is actually more helpful. He says, bring them up. In other words, rear them, raise them, nurture them, in the training and the exhortation of the Lord. Nurture them, raise them up in training according to God's word and exhortation, correction, according to God's word. Now, I'm not going to take the time to talk about the different translations. Different versions translate these words differently. The best thing that I can tell you is, is that the first one, I believe, has more the idea of, of a training, of, of just a guiding. You know, as, you're, as you grow up in your family, how are you going to guide your children? It's not always correction, but how are you going to live so that they can grow into adults that God wants them to be? The second noun really has much more the idea of admonishment, correction. A lot, of, a lot of translations, uh, including the one that I use here, translate that second noun as instruction. I think today, instruction, in the way that we typically use it in the U.S. here, it's more analogous to teaching, right? Now, if we say if, if it's corrective instruction, that, that would be a good translation. But that's more the idea. In the training, in the exhortation, the correction, that's what we need to do. Train them up. Bring them up. And again, all these verbs have that idea of continuation. They're commands. Keep on doing it. Make it your lifestyle. 
So let's take a quick look. Kids, we've seen that you need to honor your parents in all things. It's the right thing to do. It's well-pleasing to the Lord. And God will bless you when you do that. That's good stuff, right? Not easy to do, but it's good benefits. Parents, what has Paul said to us? Don't stir your kids up. Don't provoke them. Don't make them angry. Don't irritate them. Because when we do that, the end result tends to be that they get discouraged. Now, I'm not saying don't ever tell them no. Give them what they always want. Okay, all of us know that does not work. Okay, but what I'm saying is in areas like with Miriam that I read to you, we should have been more gracious. We should have been more flexible. Yes, we had the standards. But in her case, I think we should have backed off a bit. Guys, there's no cookie cutter families, right? There's no cookie cutter kids. It takes a real prayer together, seeking what God would have for our families. And all that's different with each family in each different culture. Now, 